this Atom RC Beluga that I just received. If you want to see the unboxing, here it is. And you will see in that unboxing the plan for how I was going to set up the plane. Now I'll show you how I really set it up, the existing plane. The first thing is the flight controller isn't mounted here. As I discovered, as I worked through it, watched a couple of other videos, read the manual, that there's a, an entire flight controller bay underneath the plane. And if I had looked ahead, I would have known that. So I didn't put the, end up putting the flight controller here. It's underneath. We'll have a look at that in a minute. Here is the GPS. I did mount it as per my plan. The difference is that I uh, removed the case and just mounted the, the, the GPS directly in here. The battery that I'm planning to use, and this is balanced with the center of gravity exactly on the, the little nubs that are underneath the wings over here, and they're kind of a little tricky to find. Once you find them, there you go. There's perfectly balanced. That is a 6S 4000 milliamp hour LiPo battery. What you see here is a Raspberry Pi 02W. I plan to connect this with the internet. This is going to be a network on a plane set setup. Not strictly required for plane follow, but part of the testing that I want to do because I want to see how the telemetry between the lead vehicle and the chase vehicle works if I use LTE. And so I'm going to connect an LTE modem into there and use that. So we'll see how that goes. Also mention here that following the, the video from Essential RC, um, he pointed out that there's space for a pitot tube here in the nose. There's actually a basically a little hole in the nose specifically designed for installing a pitot tube. So as you can see, I've put a pitot tube in here. I have a little Matek DLVR CAN-based airspeed sensor plugged in here and wired, and the wire goes down in here and to the flight controller. And the last thing that I want to mention here, if you can see this, this is an antenna for a Holybro SICK telemetry radio, 915 megahertz. That is going to be how the two planes communicate telemetry. And so I mounted that sort of out the back here, out of the way from everything, so that I can get telemetry between the two planes. And that's, that's what that's for. Now, underneath, if you have a look under here, I have an Express LRS Radio Master RP1 ELRS receiver with a antenna mounted on the underneath the tail here. Uh, the wire goes through the back and there's a little exhaust hole there. It's designed for air, but I also used it for wiring. So that's where Express LRS comes in. Now, what's this part here is the most interesting thing that I missed in the unboxing because I just didn't turn the plane over. But this little canopy here is where the real magic is. Now what you can see here is that I have mounted the 7 nano flight controller. It looks like it's mounted un upside down because, well, when you turn the plane the right side up, the top is the bottom and the bottom is the top. So this actually will end up facing down, which is perfect. The um, power distribution board that comes with the 7 Nano is mounted here with the wire going through to the battery into the front of the plane. And all of the wiring here um, fits quite nicely. It looks a little untidy, but actually it's quite nicely organized. I have a, a beck in here. There's a back in here just to um, just to power the the servo rail on the flight controller because both of the ESCs would have do have a five volt output as typical ESCs do, but it's not it's not connected, so there's no power coming from either of the ESCs to power the servo rail. Maybe with this, the the default flight controller that's handled some other way. In this case, I needed five volts, so I just took. Um, battery source off the PDB here and ran it through a 5 volt back to give me 5 volts for the servos and then I ran another power line through to the front with a second uh, 5 volt back to power the Raspberry Pi. That's the whole setup of the plane. I have 
Hydropilot uh, 4.6.0, Beta 3 loaded on here for the moment. Built out of the box, actually, it's a standard configuration because Hydropilot has networking included for devices that support it, including the, the CUAV 7 Nano. There was nothing required um, that in terms of you know, custom build or anything like that. It's a pretty standard build. So what we can do now is we can power on. So here we have Mission Planner and I'm gonna use Mission Planner to set up the plane. What I often use is Mission Planner for configuring and setting up the plane and Q ground control when I'm flying. And then Mav Proxy is pretty much what I use when I'm doing SIDL and simulations, but sometimes in combination with either QGround Control or Mission Planner. That aside, we're using Mission Planner today. We're gonna to use Mission Planner, Artie Pilot Mission Planner for the setup. So the first thing we need to do is start the plane up. Um, I don't technically need power to, to, the, to the plane for doing this, but one of the things about having the flight controller mounted underneath is I don't actually have access to the USB port on the flight controller. So, uh, so I don't have an easy way to get at the plane to, to access configuration and parameters and that kind of thing, uh, unless I power the plane. And then once I power the plane, I can use my six telemetry radio connected to the PC to configure and set everything up. And it works, generally speaking, for most things. So what I can do is I can connect to, I think it's running on COM9, and I'm running it at 115.200 board. My God, dial up modem again. Bugs me so much, but that's what you get. Um, look at how slow that is. It's crazy how long it takes to download a few few K of data. It's, uh, anyway, I digress. All right, so we have the plane here and this plane is basically set up with Express LRS, everything I need to run the flight controller through the Raspberry Pi connected to the Raspberry Pi with the airspeed sensor, which you can see airspeed is actually updating here. You know, the HUD is working, the plane moves, etc. It's actually trimmed for level flight, I do need to add in, oh, I might as well do that actually while I'm here. Let's just go have a look at the configuration, the parameters. Um, and we wanna do, I wanna change pitch trim deg, and I'm gonna put in about a three degrees of pitch. There's two ways you can trim a plane for flying. One is that you, you uh, because a plane never flies perfectly level, it needs to have a slightly upward at attitude. There's two ways that you can get that to work. With RD Pilot, one is you trim the plane for exactly level, and then you put in pitch trim deck to say how much up you want. Or the alternative is that you actually put it on the bench, slightly pointing upwards when you calibrate it. Um, I prefer to pin, to trim it level and then put in and then tune it with pitch trim deck. So that's what I've done here. But that's that's really not the point of this. 